Welcome. In this Blender tutorial, we will create this rainbow arch animation loop. To begin, we will set the default animation interpolation to linear. This will make the animation run smoothly, rather than increasing and decreasing speed, as with a Bazaar animation interpolation. From the edit menu select preferences. Then animation. Select linear for the default interpolation. Hold the shift key and click on the cube and lamp. Then press the X key to delete them. We will now reset the camera's position and rotation. Click on the camera to select it. Press Alt G and then Alt R. To rotate the camera 90 degrees on the X axis. Push the R key, then X, then 90. Enter. Add a plane by clicking on the Add menu. Mesh. Plane. Scale the plane up by pushing the S key, then 10. Enter. As the scale of the plane is currently 10, we need to apply the scale to bring the scale to 1. We can also see that the plane is 20 units on the y-axis. We will need this later when creating the tunnel. To apply the scale, click on the object menu. Apply. Scale. The origin of the plane will now be moved to the left edge. The plane will then be moved to the world origin. Push the tab key to enter edit mode. Click on the edge select button. Then select the left edge. Hold the shift key and press S. Then cursor to select it. Push the tab key to enter object mode. From the object menu, select set origin. Then origin to 3D cursor. Hold the shift key and press the S key. Select cursor to world origin. Again, hold the shift key and press the S key. Click on, selected to cursor. The plane has been moved with the left edge at the world origin. This will make it easier to add and move objects and create the animation on the Y axis. A torus is added to make the rainbow arches. Click on the add menu. Mesh. Torus. Open the Add Objects properties in the bottom left corner. Enter 5 as the major radius. Enter 90 in the rotation of the X axis. Press N to open the side panel. The rotation of the torus needs to be applied. Click on the object menu. Apply. Rotation. The rotation of the X axis is now zero. Push the N key again to close the side panel. Right mouse click on the torus. Select Shade Smooth. We will now look at adding materials to the objects. Click on the Shading Workspace. With the plane selected, 
Click on the new material button. Reduce the roughness to zero to make the plane fully reflective. Make the base color of the plane black. We will use the EV render engine to render the animation. We will change some render options so the reflections work correctly. Click on the render properties icon. Make sure EV is selected as the render engine. Then enable screen space reflections. Select the torus and then click on the new material button. Click on the principled shader and push the X key to delete it. Click on the Add menu and add an emission shader. Then connect it to the surface connection of the material output. Set the strength of the emission shader to 5. Click on the Render Preview button to enter Render Preview mode. Enable Bloom from within the Render Properties. Click on the World Properties icon. Then make the world color black. We will now add the colors to the torus. Add a color ramp node. Then connect it to the color input of the emission shader. Change the colors in the color ramp to colors of your choice. Click on the plus button to add more color positions. Change the interpolation from linear to ease. From the drop down menu, select distribute stops evenly. Add a gradient texture. Connect the factor of the gradient texture to the factor of the color ramp. We will now look at creating the animation. Click back onto the layout workspace. Make sure the torus is selected, then duplicate it by holding the shift key and push D. Push the Y key, then 10. Enter. This will move the new torus 10 units on the y-axis, which will be halfway on the plane. Click on the Render Preview button. Rotate the second torus by pushing the R key, then Y, 180, Enter.
Click on the solid shading mode button. We will now add the objects to their own collection. We will then create new collection instances along the Y axis. Hold the shift key and click on each torus and the plane so they are all selected. Hold the shift key and press M. Then select new collection. Enter a name for the collection and click the OK button. Click on the add menu. Then collection instance. Select the collection we created. Move the collection on the Y axis by pushing G for grab, then Y. Then 20. Enter. To duplicate the collection instance, hold the shift key and press D. Move it along the Y axis by pushing Y, then 20. Enter. We can repeat the process by holding the shift key and pushing the R key to create more collection instances. Add about 7 or 8 collections. We can add more later if needed. Press 0 on the number pad to look through the camera. Select the camera by clicking on it in the outliner panel. Move the camera up one unit by pushing the G key. Then Z. Then 1. Enter. When we move into render preview mode, we can see the effect of the materials and reflections. We will now adjust the camera settings so the camera can see further and make the tunnel longer. Click on the camera icon in the side panel. The camera clipping by default is set to 100. I will increase it to 300. We will add more collections to the tunnel while looking through the camera. Click on the last tunnel collection in the outliner. Move the mouse pointer inside the viewport window. Hold shift and press D to duplicate it. Move it by pushing the Y key. Then 20. Enter. Hold the shift key and press the R key to repeat the process. Add more collections until you cannot see any more collection being added through the camera. Click on the solid view button. We will now animate the camera movement. Select the camera by clicking on it in the outliner panel. Within the camera properties, open the viewport display menu and enable limits. This will enable us to see how far the camera can see along the tunnel. More collection instances can be added if needed by repeating the process of duplicating the last collection instance, then moving the collection on the Y axis. The camera will be moved 100 units on the Y axis for the animation. At least 5 collection instances will need to be added at the end of the camera range. Drag the top of the timeline up if needed. Enter 100 as the end frame of the animation. Make sure the camera is selected and the timeline is at frame 1. Press the I key to create a keyframe and select location. 
The animation will be 100 frames. For the animation to loop without a double frame, the keyframe will be entered at frame 101. Move the camera 100 units on the Y axis by pushing G for grab. Then Y. Then 100. Enter. Press the I key to create a keyframe and select location. Press the space bar to run the animation. Additional collections can be added. If the camera limits go beyond the last collection, we will now animate the rotation of the torus. Move the timeline back to frame 1. Hold the shift key and Click on the first two torus objects. Press the I key to create a keyframe, then select rotation. Move the timeline to frame 101. Rotate the torus by pushing R, then Y, 360. Enter. Press the I key to create a keyframe, then select rotation. We can now preview the animation. To render the animation, click on the Output Properties icon. I will use the default resolution and frame rate. Select an output location within your system. Select FFmpeg file format. I will use the MPEG4 container. And perceptually lossless quality. Click on the render menu. Then render animation. I will pause the video while the animation renders. The animation can be looped over numerous times in your favorite video editor to create a continuous looping animation. Click the like button if you found this tutorial useful. Subscribe to this channel for regular Blender tutorials.